What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Another episode on the caddy. Oh yeah. Today is finally lowering day. I've got all the bits. It's long overdue. Let's have a butcher's and see what we've got. Got the caddy in the workshop. It's just on the ramp. I haven't lifted it up at all yet. I just wanted to show what ride heights we're playing with. The back end, we have got about 13 centimetres between the top of the tyre and the arch, roughly. Front end, I swear it looks like it's one of the highest VW caddies out there. Front end, what are we saying? We have got 11 and a half centimetres. Today is lowering day. Got all the bits, I'm ready to go. Let's have a look in the spray booth because we do have a collection of pieces. First of all, they are the shock absorbers off the donor Toran. They were new not long before I got the Toran. So I literally give them a quick tickle off, painted them shiny black. We've got new EBAC 60 mil lowering springs. Top mounts are still good, so we're gonna reuse those. Shackle plates. Now, they're the rear shackle plates and I did go for an eight hole. Don't know why, it was only a five or more. I might want it higher one day because the lower you've got the spring in the hole, the higher the van is. Got the eight hole, just in case. Rear stance, lowering shock absorbers. Now, if you're wondering, well, I bought stance shocks and they weren't shiny. Well, I put some lacquer on them because any new parts you fit, within a year, they've gone rusty. So I've lacquered the rear shocks to keep them good. I did also paint the rear shackles. They normally come bare metal. And if you don't paint them, they're gonna rust out pretty quick. Now. As you might have noticed, I don't have any clamping plates or any weld-on pads for the rear beam, and I'll explain why in a minute. Gonna do the back first, as it's the hardest job. Like to do the harder job first, easier job last. That way your day gets easier. Let's get it up in the air, let's get the wheels off, and let's see what's going on. Got it off the floor, wheels are off. Quickly have a look at the front end, see what's going on. So, pinch bolt shock absorber we've got an 18 mil nut and then we've got a, a 14 mil multi spline bit for the other side it is a big spline bit also need to get the drop link off 18 or 19 mil little tip with drop links clean the end of that thread with a wire wheel or a wire brush grease it right up then there is a 5 mil hex bit in the middle Try and get the thread as clean as possible because drop links can be a pain in the arris. Get your nut and bolt out of the way, get your drop link out of the way, then we need to separate the hub from the shock. Now some people just hammer the shock, the hub downwards. That ends up making a real mess. Now I've made a tool, this is a 12 mil bolt. I've ground the two sides parallel to each other and on the back of the hub, there is a groove. Those parallel sides fit in the groove. I've then lightly taken the sides off, the threads you can see, and I've rounded the edges. Now what you do, you put that in the groove, turn it 90 degrees, and that opens up the jaws of the hub, and it will slide right out. You can buy these, I'm not, no, uh, I'm not no inventor, you can buy them, and the one I've got is too small, so I made out of an M12 bolt. Moving on to the top, Nice and simple. I've got the scuttle panel out of the way already. We've got three 13 mil bolts. Undo them and it'll drop down, but make sure you do the bottom first. Undo the bottom, undo the top, get both shocks out. Let's lift it up in the air and have a look, see what's going on underneath. Got it up in the air. And firstly, if you're fitting the clamp on plates, you might be able to do it without taking the rear beam off. I don't know. Taking the rear beam off, and I'll explain what I mean. These plates here, you buy them and they weld on the bottom because the axle, with the axle flip conversion, the axle sits on top of the lease springs. That lowers it down. You buy a pair of these and you weld them on the bottom. Well, I don't see the point in buying a pair of these when there's already a pair there. My plan is to cut these off, flip them over 180 and weld them on the bottom. We shall see if it works, otherwise I'll be stuck because I haven't got another spare beam. Now, to get the beam off, you've obviously got some nuts and bolts up there. I'm gonna undo the top ones, and then we'll undo these when it's on the floor. Again, clean the threads with wire wheel, and plenty of lubricant. Then we've got the shock bolts. You can see the top of the shock. 
undo that. It looks like a 21 before I even go near it. Then we've got the drop links. I'm gonna undo the bottom of the drop links for now. Um, don't know if you need shorter ones. When you lower stuff, you need shorter ones. But as we're doing both, this arm can hang further down. As we're taking the rear beam right off, we need to unplug the rear ABS, unplug them, pull the wires out the way nicely. You don't want to break them. One more bolt on the front leaf spring, and let's get this rear axle on the floor. We got the rear beam off, and before you go undoing any brake cables and stuff like that and hoses, just unbolt the cables and let them hang, let them hang down. A lot easier. Unplug the ABS sensors, undo the two 13s, pull the two calipers out, let them hang down. No bleeding, nothing. Nice and easy. With regards to this, I have left the anti-roll bar still on there. We've left the shocks on there for now. Now I've got more access. I'll undo the top bolts. It's a bit of a squeeze. Back bolts, undone one, undone two. The other back bolt was a little bit stiff, so we had a bar on it, but uh, not too bad. The strategic way I done it, I undone the rears, let it hang down so it touched the floor. Then once it had taken the load, I undone the front two and carefully lowered it down. Two people would make this job a lot easier. Um, yeah, not too bad at all actually. Probably took about half hour, nice and easy. We're gonna get these off. I'm just gonna get them off with the old Milwaukee. That'll just smash them off. We still need the nuts and bolts. I will clean them up with a wire wheel and uh, and yeah, give them a little dusting of silver to make them pretty. And then we need to get the shackles off. Then we need to get the U-bolts out. I, uh, I'm going to clean them. Going to grease them. Going to wire wheel them on the drill. Grease them a bit more. Buzz them off. We'll reuse them. Let's get this rear beam stripped down and have a look to see if I can cut those sandwich plates out. We have got the leafs off one and two shackles come apart u-bolts come apart quite easy actually both sides now first thing i'm just going to show you what i'm doing and then how i've worked it out rear beam is upside down first of all that lives on there and as you can imagine the u-bolts go over that i've cut him off there's a bit of weld at the top there's a bit of weld at the bottom there's nothing on the sides it's then chiseled off. I cleaned off the welds that were on there, nice and easy. This is the spring locator. The, the leaf springs sit on this, and what I'd done before I'd done any cutting, I just marked it with the grinder, and that faced the front of the vehicle. I have then cut this off. You can see slight grind marks, both sides, one front, one back. Now, I've left the weld marks on that, and I haven't ground that face at all. That way, I can still see exactly where it used to sit. When I take that off, mark to the front. I don't know if that's offset or not, so mark to the front. That's then going to sit on there. Easy as that. I have left that side on to cross-reference that I'm not welding it on at skew if angle you could weld it pissed basically and what i'm going to do i'm going to get a spirit level on that bottom one get the axle so it's sat at the right angle spirit level sat on that bottom one let me get a spirit level get the axle sat straight of course and not do it with one hand holding a camera basically i'll have that completely level then i'll come over to this side and I'll get that completely level, but on the top. You with me? Hopefully. Anyway, when you take the springs off, you're gonna see, I don't know what that is or what that's meant to be. That lived in that little cup, upside down that way. I've read online that there's a locator and stuff like that. So let's have a little look. There is a locator and that sat in those holes but we're flipping the axle and hopefully, oh, the whole world's falling down. Basically, that is what's underneath. There is metal in the middle. I have ground this one down with a grinder. I've spent a while doing it, shaping it nicely. That is 15, it's about 15 mil, just shy of 15 mil. I've made it completely center. Obviously it's center, 
but you could go thicker one side, thicker the other. It's completely center. That now locates into there. It's nice and tight. It doesn't move. Take your time when grinding that out. And that way your beam is going to sit parallel, completely square on your leafs when you flip it over. Now all I need to do is weld that on there in the upside down position before I cut that one off. Weld this one on, move on to the other side, and then I want to clean it all up so it looks pretty. Probably just going to run over it with a grinder and maybe satin black it. I've got a few cans of satin black. And the same with the springs. I don't know about going too mad with the springs. We're replacing these. They do like to fall over. Right, I have spent a little while checking, double checking. You don't want to weld these on in the wrong places. I have got it soundly balanced on the edge of some mold grips and a piece of metal that made this surface bob on with the spirit level. Now, if we look at this side, I have tack welded it in place. It's a big tack weld, but check that out. Absolutely plumbo. Now this other side was exactly the same when I held it up. So that means this plate is parallel to the plate that we haven't cut off. I am gonna tack weld it in place and offer it up. Then I'm gonna measure hub to hub on the front. I want it to be absolutely perfect. I don't wanna drive down the road and it wanna turn right or turn left. So it's dinner time. This one's on, tack welded. We need to cut that one off, tack weld it, put it on and try it. Also, I am gonna weld these back on on the other side. That way the U-clamps aren't just clamping into the, into the rear beam. They've actually got something nice to clamp onto. Little bit of Bernie and Leepu chop shop garage going on, but I believe it should be perfect. Right, I'm back from dinner. We've got the other side on. We're happy with that. Check the level on that. Oh yeah, smack in the center. That is the same as that side. And to make sure they are, what's the word, perpendicular to each other, I've measured between there. We've got a gap 30 mil. Now, if we go over to this side, in the exact same spot, we've got 30 mil. I have also measured in a few other areas. And to make sure they're the same forwards and backwards, that is square on there. And look how much eclipse we've got, i.e. this semicircle in there. Now we go over this side. Same amount of circle. So that tells me they're the same front, back, left, right. They're tacked in place. I'm gonna put it on. And we're gonna measure the distances between the front and the rear hubs. I should have measured them before I took it off, but phew, done now, isn't it? Let's measure them now. As long as they're square and they look center, I'm happy. When you're on your own, you need to hold a masking tape one length of the car to the other. You have to get creative. That's masking tape holding it to the hub. And if we come and look up here, right on the nose, two meters, 66 centimeters. Let's get it on the other side. I'm slightly apprehensive to see the measurement, but let's see. We've got the tape in the same spot. I haven't checked yet. Look at that, two meters, 66. That's like on the nose. I am really happy with that. So I would like to have checked it beforehand, but I was a bit eager and took the rear beam off. If anyone's got a caddy and you've got it up on the ramp or you've got it up in the air with two wheels on one side off, take a measurement for me and drop it in the comments. I've got it hooked inside the front hub there and you can see where I measured to. Beams all on the floor and welded back together. We definitely got penetration, check that out. So welded it back on both sides and under the sides and we've got the clamp or the locators back for the U-bolts. Done both ends. What I was on about in the last shot, taking a notch out of there for the, uh, for the shock bolt. Well, in the end, I just shaved the tip of the bolt down, which gave me five mil and I've put a little bit of a chamfer in there, a bit of a grinding. Now you can just slide the bolt in. 
happy days. So it's nearly 10 o'clock at night. This has to go back on tonight because I have a job booked in tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. sharp, and uh, we have got a caddy on the ramp. Gonna open the main door up, get it outside, hit it with a grinder, bit of a flap disc, a few wire wheel in a few areas, and I'm gonna paint it black. Whatever comes off, I want it to look good when it goes back on. It's the following day. We finished about half 11 last night, straight back to it this morning. We've cleaned it all up. We've sat and blacked it. The finish is all right. It's not as pretty as the other bits, but I will lacquer it with some uh, rattle can lacquer when it's in situ. Also, I did have to lower the height of our new locator pins so they would go all the way in there as the face was bottoming out on the axle. We have lowered them. They sit nice and flat. Happy days. I have also put a bit of silver over the U-bolts and the nuts and bolts. Just makes them look a bit prettier. This isn't a caddy full restoration. It's a bit of a clean and tidy up. I have got a bit carried away. But anyway, I'm going to get the leaf springs bolted to the rear beam. Go get a friend and then lift it up. Get it in place. I'm running out of time today. I do have two other jobs booked in. So I need the ramp ASAP. One thing to mention, some of the bolts that hold the rear shackles on, the nuts are on the back of the shackles. So when you get new plates, you need to get new nuts. I haven't got new nuts. They're gonna have to put it in place with no nuts for now. Let's get the first time lapse on the go. Put it together, stick the back end together, stick the fronts on, get it down, get it out of the way. Oh yeah. Had to do some work in between. Caddy's back on the ramp, now we were on the front. I've got my tool in, my special tool that I made that you turn 90 degrees. I've soaked it up, and to give me a bit more leeway, I have taken the drive shaft nut out. I do that on every vehicle when taking the, the shock out, because as the hub goes down, it sometimes needs to flare forward to get it out. Got my tool in, I've WD-40'd it up. If you don't use a tool to open it up, you could end up spending half hour, 40 minutes beating that off. It really is tight. But, how about that? I do need to get a lever bar in there and just lever it the last of the way. Then when you put it back together, put the tool in. As easy as that. I'll get these done. We can finally see how it looks all lowered. I gave it a little wiggle and a little lever off camera and it doesn't go down enough. You could probably get a bar in there somewhere and graunch it out, but it's not how I like to do it. So I am gonna take the three removable ball joint bolts out. Which should give me a lot more room. It is a bit of a wiggle when putting it back together after, because you've got to put the drive shaft in and it hangs funny out of the way. But let's see. Dry shaft out of the way. Oh, here she comes. That's how good that tool is. Now it'll just fall off. Oh yeah. We don't want to snag any hoses. Oh, oh yeah. It is hanging a bit precariously. Uh, block of wood to hand to save the day. Like so. Undo the top 13 mil bolts, lower it down, and fit in reverse. Hopefully the Toran shocks fit this. We're gonna find out. I can confirm that Toran shocks fit a caddy, happy days. I uh, I also found my drop link it was knackered. Luckily, I managed to get one off of the Toran. Hopefully, the other side's good. Yeah, shock's in. The pinch bolt, I did have to hammer this one out. It was very tight. Hammered it out. It didn't look too good, so I nicked that off the Toran as well. Um, yeah, 
drive shaft nut back in, and we are done on this side. Just like that, we're all done. Front shocks and springs looking pretty in the front wheel arches. I have taken it out for a drive just to make sure the wheels didn't fall off, and they didn't. So let's have a little look and see what's going on. Rear beam looks really good. Happy with how clean and tidy it looks under there. Anti-roll bar is still looking a bit tired, but it's just, it needs a clean and a paint. My anti-roll bar bushes are slightly worn, so I've ordered some poly ones of those. When they turn up, I'll clean and paint the anti-roll bar at the same time. That way, it'll all look fresh. Two things I wanna point out, maybe more than two. When driving over a bump, I noticed the exhaust hit the corner here when it's lowered on the floor. This is really close. Probably just gonna cut the corner off that and it will clear the exhaust and stop banging around. When I put the rear wheels on and went to give the wheels a spin, I noticed that the handbrake was slightly binding. And because the rear beam is now up there, we've got an extra kink in the handbrake cables. Handbrake still works fine, but I noticed it was pulling on the handbrake a little bit. So I had to back the tensioner off inside the car. Backed it off a little bit. Both rear wheels spin nicely. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out, that my handbrake was a bit tighter after bolting it all back together. If you remember, I said I did buy the eight hole rear hangers, but that's where it is now. I'm happy with the height. I've still got plenty of adjustment. What you'll find is when you've got the eight hole, they hang right down here below the bumper and you can see them hanging out. Didn't like that, so I've cut them down at a strategic angle, looking pretty, and I did put a bit of satin black on the fresh cut and rounded the corners off. Bolts look good enough. As I say, some zinc fresh bolts would be nice, but um, yeah, just a bit of silver on the bolts is looking good enough. I did manage to get the square nuts off of the old hangers. Just went round the edges with a grinding disc, hammer, managed to tap them off, and we've reused the old nuts. Happy days. I've chopped the bump stops down. Saw that online, the old bump stops come down here quite close to the axle. So I've chopped them down to the last nugget and they are, yeah, I'm sure they'll do the job nicely. Everything looking quite pretty in there, considering I just hit it with a grinder and then a bit of satin black, looking really good. Yeah, happy with that. Um, front went together as it should, nice and easy. Toran shocks went in. One thing, if you're gonna paint your shocks, Try not to put too much paint around the bottom because they were a bit stiff to get back in the hub. Next time, I'll probably just base coat the bottom and I won't lacquer them because the lacquering them puts an extra few mil on them. Then makes them really tight in the hub. But uh, yeah, happy days. Let's get it down on the floor. Check out how low it sits. We've got 60 mil springs on the front and then we've got multi-height rear hangers. So we can have it higher or lower. And you can see, I can go two more lower, but I think it's low enough. Let's get it down and have a good time. Perfect. And there it is. So happy with how it's turned out. I didn't want it any lower. I've got, I'm on a bumpy industrial estate. I have kids, I have fishing stuff. I didn't want it too slammed. It's perfect. It's almost an equal ride height from the front to the back. Um, yeah, really happy. Still got a hole in the rear light. I'm looking for some later light. Yeah, really happy with that. Um, turned out nice. Let's measure the arches and see what we got. Bit of a crude way of measuring, but if you remember from the start of the video, what we had? No, no, nor did I, I had to go back and check. Well, the rears were 13. We're now down to six and a half. That is, is that like 65 mil difference? Well, I'm sure you can work it out. The fronts beforehand were 11 and a half. We're now down to six and a half. Yes, yeah, like the same gap from front to back. Nearly a 60 mil drop on the front. 60 mil or just over on the rear. Really happy. What I do, I will drop a picture of what it was like before. I parked it on level ground in a similar place. Yeah, that was it before. That is it now. Really happy. I do have a couple of things I want to stick on it, but I need to paint them. I have got the spoiler for the rear. The barn door rear comes with two rear spoilers, one little one that side and bigger one that side. Got to paint it. It is in ABS plastic, so it is a nice plastic. We need to rub it down and paint it. I have also got a rail cover 
covers this rail, door does still open because the missus asked that, she's like, how does the door still open? Showed her, paint those, get them on, and side skirts, I haven't ordered them yet, probably gonna wait Thanks, Pumsy. Right in the middle of shot. Nice one. Uh, oh, he's getting his bum cheeks out. Anyway, going to wait until I get the side skirts, paint those bits. Toran is all stripped down. Got the wing mirrors off. Going to paint the wing mirrors, spoiler, side rail and side skirts all at the same time. Extra bonus video for you guys this weekend. We're going to remap it. I used the van last night, done 60 miles in it. No problems with the engine, no engine warning lights. We've got a stage one remap to go on it. I'm going to stick that on it tomorrow. We'll take it for a drive out. We'll test the suspension. Drives absolutely spot on. It's not too firm. It's not too soft. Perfect for road and track use. Cheeky extra video out tomorrow. Only a short video, but some of you might like that. If you found the video useful, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Thank you.